What's up world, this is Brad from Project Build Stuff and today we're turning the world's loneliest fire pit into this. When I moved into this house a few years ago, this fire pit was already installed by the previous owners. It's really nice to have, but to be honest, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb out here in the yard. So after the events of the last year, I feel like I need a nice, big, entertaining area out here to invite friends and family over and enjoy this outdoor space. My fire pit was looking pretty rough in need of some serious TLC. We'll focus on that later, but for now, let's get it cleared out of the way so we have a nice, clean slate to work with. To map out our fire pit area, we're going to start by pounding a stake in the center of the fire pit and then using some string and marking spray paint to establish the perimeter. When I started digging out the grass, I thought it would be easy. I would just grab my trusty shovel and dig it out no problem. But man was I wrong. It was backbreaking work and I would have been there for days. So I had to come up with a better method. So I ended up combining my shovel as well as a pick for a much easier method that took way less time. Let me show you. I found it easiest to establish a perimeter with a shovel, which gives you a nice clean break between the grass we're going to get rid of and the grass we're going to keep. I then used my shovel to break down the circle into smaller 2 foot by 4 foot sections, which I found much easier to manage. And then I just went at it with the wide end of my pickaxe. I made sure to get underneath the grass roots and just pull it up one small piece at a time. It was a lot of work, don't get me wrong, but it was totally doable and a couple hours of sweat equity and I had it all out of there. Removing the grass left me with a bit of an uneven surface, so I attacked it with the cultivator to help level the whole area out. If you don't have access to one of these, it's not a big deal. You can do the same thing with a good metal rake. My fire pit has clearly seen better days and is in need of a major cleanup. So we're gonna start with a tip I showed in my landscaping video of pressure washing these concrete stones, which completely brings them back to life and makes them look new again. I also hit the fire pit insert with the pressure washer, which is gonna clean off any loose dirt or rust. To bring this rusty insert back to life, we're gonna hit it with a good paint job, and that starts with some rusty metal primer. It's perfect for this application because it's gonna help seal in all that rust and give us a nice, clean surface for our paint to adhere to. In terms of paint, I went with a matte black high heat paint because let's be honest, it's a fire pit. It's gonna get really hot and normal paint just wouldn't stand up to those temperatures. If you're wanting to do this type of project yourself and you're not a weirdo like me who already has a random fire pit in their backyard, that's okay. I'll leave a couple of links down in the description for some awesome fire pits you can install yourself. With everything cleaned up and looking awesome, our final step of this portion is just to put everything back where it started. An important tip here is to make sure as you put your stones back that your circle is nice and even and the right size for your insert to slide in perfectly. Whew, so much better than where we started. To hold up our lighting, we need to put in some four x four posts. So I'm using some wooden stakes to measure and mark our dig locations. Quick reminder, be sure to call 811 before you do any digging so they can come out and check your yard for any underground utility lines. Our next step is just to get to digging and digging and digging and digging. I won't sugarcoat it for you, it is a lot of work, but with only three holes to dig, it's not too bad. Each one took me about 30 to 45 minutes. If this is a little too labor intensive for you, you can get an auger which will make quick work of these holes. Due to the frost line here in Indiana, I had to dig my holes about three feet deep, but be sure to check in your area for the recommended depth for post holes. Now that our holes are dug, the next step is setting our posts. We're going to be using Quickrete fast setting concrete in order to do this. It's great for DIYers who are new to concrete or nervous about using it because you don't have to mix it at all. All you do is pour it into the hole with your post, add some water, and within 20 to 40 minutes it'll be fully cured and ready to move on to the next step. 
We'll start by filling our hole with a couple inches of gravel to help level our post. Then we'll pop our post in place and make sure it's positioned correctly. To keep our post stable while the concrete sets, I'm going to clamp and screw a couple of scrap 2x4s to the post just to keep them in place. Make sure everything's good and level and then we're ready for concrete. This fast setting concrete is super easy to use, just cut open your bag and pour it in the hole. I used about two bags per hole. Final step, just add water, about a gallon per bag or until your hole is full. This fireplace area is really coming along. The posts are set and solid as a rock, and our final step is to get this area leveled out and get the hardscaping and gravel down. We're gonna be using this in no time. Before we put any gravel or stone down, we gotta put down a nice heavy duty weed block. Well, that's unless you like pulling weeds, but I don't, so weed block's a must. To keep your weed block in place, be sure to grab some of these outdoor staples. They're super easy to put in and they'll save you a lot of headaches in the future. Before we pour our gravel, we're gonna make a perimeter using these paver stones. This isn't only going to look really nice, it's also gonna help contain the gravel and keep it looking nice for years to come. It's finally gravel time. I got a half a cubic yard of gravel delivered to my house by my local landscaping supplier. It's the best option for getting bulk gravel at a great budget price. The fun part is getting all that gravel to the backyard, one shovel full and wheelbarrow at a time. With all the gravel in place, we're just gonna use a good metal rake to spread it all out evenly. I accounted for about an inch of gravel across the entire circle, which worked out perfectly. The final step of our hardscaping is to trim away that excess weed block. I found that a utility knife works best. Last but not least, let's get the lights hung. I started by drilling some holes in the post and threading in some heavy duty hooks. To keep the lights in place, I just used a couple of zip ties on each one of the hooks and it was good to go. If you watch this video, I'm sure you're a DIY nut like me and you can't wait to do an awesome project like this in your backyard to completely transform your space. So let's talk a little bit about how much this will cost you. In total, I spent about $350 on the entire project, which in my opinion wasn't too bad, but if that's a little outside of your budget, that's okay. We can cut out the lights and pole portion and bring that cost down closer to $200, which is a great bang for your buck for a project of this scale that will completely transform your backyard or entertaining area. If you liked what you saw here today, be sure to subscribe down below because I'm going to have a bunch more outdoor projects coming very soon as I continue to transform my backyard area. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And until next time, it's your turn. Go build stuff. This is an awesome landscaping video as well. You should check this out if you're doing any outdoor work. I highly recommend it.